Today uh, we have an announcement from the Honorable Margaret McQuaig Boyd, Minister of Energy. She's joined by Dave Mowat, President and CEO of ATB Financial. The Minister will have some remarks, followed by some remarks from Dave, and then we'll take questions. Minister. Thank you. So thank you for being here today. In our first throne speech, our government pointed out that one of the proudest accomplishments of Peter Lougheed's government was that first PC government's strong approach to our resource wealth. Premier Lougheed fought to establish beyond debate that Alberta's natural resources belong to the people of Alberta. And Premier Lougheed then insisted on prudent management of those resources, prudent management in the public interest. We said in the throne speech that we are going to return to those principles. And that's our announcement today. I am pleased to announce that Dave Mowat, President and CEO of ATB Financial, has agreed to lead a panel review that will consider how Alberta's energy resource royalties can best serve the public interest. This is an important issue for Alberta families, and it is important that we do it right. The government is asking Mr. Mowat and this panel to carefully consider the issues and to undertake a meaningful engagement with stakeholders for, and Albertans. Dave's first job will be to recruit additional panel members. The panel's role will then be to listen to the views of Albertans, industry, and other stakeholders. Dave has assured me that the process will be transparent and engaging. This is a complicated subject, and Albertans will benefit from a clear understanding of the issues. Aside from being a strong businessman, Dave is well known for his straightforward discussions and his ability to draw out the essence of complicated issues. Mr. Mowat and his colleagues will provide insight and analysis as we consider next steps. I've been doing a lot of listening myself so far. I've been learning about the successes and challenges of people working in the Alberta energy industry, and we have heard their advice on how to move forward in the best interest of all Albertans. To be successful, collaboration is key. As you know, yesterday we announced a parallel process advisory panel to inform the government's climate change strategy, and we will, sorry, which will be chaired by Andrew Leach. The advice of both panels will be considered by the government prior to any decisions. We need to ensure that the overall effect of our policies ensures sustainable growth for our energy industry and for Albertan families. We are aiming to have some, at least some preliminary conclusions by the end of the year. Our government well understands the critical importance of the energy industry and the many benefits it brings to everyone in our province. As the Premier and I have committed to do, any changes that may come from this review will only be made after thorough and thoughtful discussion with all Albertans. In the weeks to come, we will announce uh, the other panel, members of the panel and our consultation plan. I am very pleased to take your questions after Dave has made his comments. Dave? Thank you very much, Minister. It's, uh, and I'm certainly honoured to uh, serve on this advisory panel and uh, chair it for the Royalty Review. You know, I was, uh, I was born uh, in Alberta and I've uh, lived and worked uh, all across Canada. So I have a, a strong sense of how important uh, this is, not only for Albertans, but uh, for our country uh, to get it right. And it's a, uh, it's a daunting challenge, and, uh, but I think it's also a great opportunity uh, to help people uh, from around Alberta understand uh, such an important issue. My commitment to everyone is to present the facts and create a discussion with all stakeholders, all stakeholders, and a discussion that builds on understanding and creating on the common ground that uh, we all must reach uh, to be successful. So I, uh, having born here, I care deeply about uh, this province and through my uh, professional work uh, as a banker and also uh, my involvement in the community, you know, one of the things I've always sought to do is to strive to help Albertans, uh, the businesses of Albertans, uh, the individuals and the communities. And uh, when we find success is when we find uh, all three of them uh, working well together. And so my role in the advisory panel is to, uh, to chair it and to build on that very experience. And like the minister, uh, my, uh, my goal is uh, to engage uh, all stakeholders. I plan to get organized over the next uh, month and uh, begin in earnest uh, starting later this summer. 
So again, thank you, uh, Minister, for this uh, opportunity. I, I vacillate between, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, goodness, and uh, it's a great opportunity. Um, but as one of uh, four million uh, plus owners of Alberta's uh, natural resources, uh, and uh, bringing my understanding of just how important uh, this industry is to Alberta, I want the best uh, possible system for all of us. Thank you. Thank you both. Questions from the floor now, please. Is there a sense of just how many panelists will be on the panel in the end, and, and where exactly are you looking to recruit? <coughs> you know, this is day one of the next phase, and, and Dave and I will be discussing that in the next few weeks. So that's part of the next announcement when we tell you about the panel members and, and our next our consultation process. So. When will it be done? Like, what's the timetable? Will it be done by in, in time for December? Oh, I think uh, the whole, it'll be done soon, and then, yeah, I think we're going to have the initial, some findings or analysis back, but, you know, in, by the end of the year, there'll be something for you, yes. Who's going to be selecting the panelists? Pardon me? Who will be selecting the panelists? Uh, my job is to recruit some people, some smart, uh, creative people who know uh, the business and uh, the issues, and then uh, discuss them with uh, the minister. Yeah. What's the mandate in terms of the question you're asking yourself? The old review, and that the question was, are we receiving a fair share mm -hmm. of our resources for the taxpayers, um, or the owners of the resource? The answer was no. Heading into this, is that the same kind of question you're asking yourself? Yeah. You know, I think it's it's important that we that we talk about outcomes, so that will be. Uh, part of the work uh, as we uh, put the panel, panel together and uh, work uh, with the minister to get a sense of what outcome uh, we're, we're trying to achieve. I, I don't think you can talk about uh, energy without talking about the environment, so the fact that the uh, uh, leeches uh, program is, uh, going to, uh, to, is good. It's a positive thing. We can uh, craft um, what outcome we're trying to create. And that's my follow-up question to the minister. How is this different than the old review? done in 2007? Uh, well, the not totally familiar with the old review exactly how the process was, but uh, in talking to industry, they're pleased to be engaged and consulted, and uh, that's advice we've gotten along the way, is look at the whole industry together, and uh, Dave and I have spoken a little bit, and that's, I think, how we're going to continue, is engaging all aspects of the industry. How would your, your feeling about uh, public, uh, public hearings as the previous royalty review actually did throughout the province? Uh, I'm going to uh, sit down with uh, uh, the people that as we put together the panel and figure out what the best way is to engage Albertans. Like I, I think uh, myself, uh, you know, what I think the people's most interest in is to get the facts and be confident uh, that the panel is uh, looking at the data that can bring the government uh, and industry and everyone to the right uh, conclusion. So the best way we can engage Albertans in doing that is exactly what we'll do. What concerns do you have right now with the way the royalty structure operates that necessitates this review? Uh, well, it when we were in campaign mode, we certainly said that we were going to do this and uh, review the royalty structure. That was a promise we made in, in our platform. And uh, in starting those talks with industry, we uh, were advised fairly strongly to also look at climate change at the same time and just look at the whole industry. So that's what we're doing. And, and it's a review. That's, we're just going to look at things in a holistic fashion. Well, why was that promise made? Terms of you didn't really answer the question. Why was that promise made? You said it was a campaign promise, but why? Well, I think there was a concern um, from Albertans. Are we getting our fair share? Could it be different? Could it be better? So we're delivering in that promise and uh, reviewing. And I think in anything, there probably should be a review every few years in anything like that. And uh, it's been a few years, so I think it's, it's quite a good time to do it. In terms of what you're reviewing and what you're looking at, how much emphasis will be looking at what other jurisdictions do in terms of how they, you know, rate their royalties? Um, good question. I think that'll be one of our discussions moving forward. Is you know, it's, it's important. Uh, we can wish a lot of things, but the world uh, brings us uh, the reality of other jurisdictions have different uh, setups. So I, I think it's, that's that holistic engagement of all the stakeholders is yeah. to understand you know, companies uh, position other jurisdictions where they operate. Uh, ultimately, for Alberta to be successful, um, everybody involved in this whole process has to be successful. And, and I think in this world, you have to be competitive. Minister, during the election campaign, 
one of the stated goals um, by, by the Premier uh, for this royalty review was to in, find ways to incent value-added upgrading. Um, how will this review accomplish that? I think, um, well, the review helps us understand the whole industry, and uh, the value-added piece certainly is important, and there's other things besides refineries that are being done. So, again, that'll be maybe part of the structure, which it currently is if, if investment comes back in, you get royalty credits. So, again, that's going to be the whole understanding of how the industry works. And, and as Dave mentioned, we, we need to um, come up with something that's going to encourage uh, investment in Alberta or reinvestment with companies. So it, it's going to be part of the whole package, I think. Will there be a member of the industry sitting on the panel? You know, I, that's, a, that's a very good question. An important one is, is that I, I don't think the panel is representative. I, I think what the panel is is smart people who understand the issues, have inquiring minds, and are uh, creative, and who have the ability to engage and um, allow people to have substantive uh, input. So uh, I don't think you need to be from anywhere to have a good review of things. So we'll be really looking for uh, caliber people that can be exactly that. But, sorry, you mentioned earlier working with the, other, the environmental panel, the one named yesterday, that's Andrew Leach. How do you see that actually working? How closely are you going to work with them? Any idea? Uh, they have their own uh, work to do for sure, but I, I think if you uh, sit down, whether you're the finance minister in Alberta or whether uh, you're a company, I, th there's a multiple of variables and certain, certainly the price of carbon, I don't th as I said, I don't think you can talk about energy without uh, talking about uh, the environment. So I think what the opportunity we have in front of us is, you know, we've heard on corporate taxes, we're going to hear on uh, carbon and we're going to hear on uh, royalties, and, and I think uh, if you're a company, that's exactly what you want. Is is you have to deal with all of those things and the opportunity to have them uh, reviewed, and so there's a consistent interlocking. Uh, I think that's what they're looking for. One more questions from the floor, please, and then we're going to go to some yeah. questions the from the phone. Um, Randy, the platform called for the establishment of a panel that would be a permanently established panel that would report to the legislature annually or or every couple of years. Mm -hmm. Is that still the plan, or are you changing that format? You know, I, uh, I think that's Bill 209 you're referring to. And, um, yeah, I think uh, in future conversations with Dave, Dave that'll be part of the thinking, perhaps. Um, there's some good suggestions in that bill, and um, that might be, again, early days. But we'll, we'll certainly be considering that bill as well. So you're not tied to that formula? Uh, I think in engaging people, a lot of that is going to get covered off, and um, you know it says up to ten people and that kind of thing. So I think it states some good ideas that we can follow. Um, not sure if we'll go verbatim to the bill, but again, it's the early discussions, so I haven't had a chance to review that with Dave. We have four questions uh, on the phone. Operator, first question, please. my call. I, I guess I'm wondering if you could comment, is there is there any sort of a higher policy hierarchy for the government here in terms of is the priority to see an actual reduction in greenhouse gas emissions or is the priority to get a broader bigger take from uh, from the royalty system? If you have to balance off one versus the other, where's the priority? Uh, thanks James. Um, I don't know if there's a priority. We've been encouraged uh, both by the Premier and by industry to look at the industry as a whole. And um, as Dave mentioned, you can't talk to w about one without the other. So um, I think that's to be seen in future discussions. But um, it's all important. I don't know there's a priority. The other, uh, just as a follow-up, I was wondering, you, you talked a bit about the timing of wanting to report by the end of the year, and, and maybe you could both address this. But is there, is there any sense of, if you have recommendations to make changes of what kind of time frame you'd be you'd be under moving forward in terms of how quickly you could make changes once the, uh, if there are recommendations to make, to make changes, and especially in the context of whatever the price of oil is at the, at the time. Hmm. Do you want to start? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, th I think there's a, there's a tension to that. Uh, I think it was Steve Jobs that said, real engineers ship. As in uh, an engineer, somebody might have a 
an idea of designing forever. So, so I think there's, you can hear that you want to make sure you take enough time to really understand uh, and make some thoughtful uh, decisions. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I think just like in business, you have to get on with things. To, to let it lag, uh, to not have a sense of urgency, that's not how companies operate. That's not how the provincial treasury operates. So we'll be uh, working to try and find that equilibrium that uh, gives us momentum, gives us urgency, but make sure that we have a, a mind that uh, makes sure as we stay on it until we have enough information. Yeah, and that's absolutely what we've heard from industry. They don't want us to lag too long because they do... Uh, they want to have a sense of stability moving forward and what the whole picture is going to look like. Thank you. Uh, next question from the phone, please. Operator. Your next question comes from the line of Chris Barco with the Calgary Herald. Two lines open. Hi, Mister. I have a twofold question here. Can you tell me, have you set the terms of reference for the panel? And if so, what will they be? Or if you haven't chosen them, what do you envision they're going to look like? Um, well, this is day one, uh, and those are discussions Dave and I will be having, um, but I'm not sure if Dave has thoughts at this time. I, w it's a discussion we haven't had totally. Yeah, no, we've, uh, we've talked uh, oh, about smart. the process, yeah. and, and my, one of the things I'm anxious to do is to uh, get the right people on the mm -hmm. panel and then uh, put together the terms of reference, because yeah. I think somebody talked about it. I think it's very important to make sure you're working toward uh, a consistent outcome. Yeah. Uh, just going back to the timeline question, you prepare a report and present it to the minister, I presume, before December. When does the minister, when do you expect your government will make a decision one way or the other? And uh, are the recommendations coming from the panel going to be binding? Um, Dave's work will, you know, will be given to us when he's wrapped it up. Uh, the public will be aware of what we've done, but uh, they will, it will be advice. Um, and nothing will be binding as such, but it, it really depends what the product look like, looks like at the end. I'm not sure if I'm answering it totally correctly for you. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's, uh, you know, as we talked about the many factors, I, I think there's an element of tension uh, in this, you know, Someone asked earlier, what, what's the priority? I, I, I think it's, you have, to, you have to bring an optimization as opposed to maximize one or the other. Yeah. You know, that's where you get uh, those unintended consequences that neither the government wants or nor industry wants. Yeah. So, so I think it's a, an artful optimization of things uh, rather than just try and maximize one column. Yeah. Mr. Moore, right, but is there any way you can sort of tell industry when they should expect to see a decision by government on what will happen with the royalties? You know, I think my goal will be to be in constant uh, discussion with the industry so they'll know uh, where we're at and uh, they'll be part of providing uh, the information so they'll be kept up to date all the time on, on our progress. And, and I think as the minister stated, uh, they have that uh, exact same feedback as get on with it, get it done, but don't, uh, you know, do it uh, in a too short of a timeline. So, so they have that same yin and yang going themselves. So uh, I think they will be very satisfied with understanding our progress. Thank you. We have, uh, sorry, sorry, we just have, oh, I, one, just I think, have, one more on the phone. Yeah, I was just going to answer part more to that. We've, we've been clear all along that we were, we were going to listen to industry and collaborate with them and that there'd be no surprises along the way, and, and we're going to stick to that. After we uh, address the questions on the phone, we'll have time for two more from the floor. Uh, operator, next uh, question from the phone, please. Your next question comes from the line of Don Braid. Calgary Herald, your line is open. Minister, last week you said uh, you would be releasing some uh, guiding principles and objectives. Uh, I, I've taken that to mean uh, there'd be something a little more formal than this. And also, uh, it's rather odd, isn't it, that the fellow who is going to be guiding the panel uh, is setting the terms of reference for the panel? Isn't that usually the government's job in an enterprise like this? Oh, no, we'll be working together on, on those discussions moving forward, um, and that's part of the next announcement is what the process may look like and who's on the panel. So this is just the first day of the next steps. Thank you. Uh, two more from the floor. I was going to ask, Mr. Moy, why would you accept a job without terms of reference? Uh, we're finalizing the terms of reference. Yeah. We've talked about the outcomes we're trying to uh, get, and as I say, trying to find that optimization of the, the various things in play here. So I, I think it's clear, you know, the challenge that's in front of us uh, for sure. And, uh, 
you, you know, I think making sure that uh, we get some real thought on this and, and get them clear is, I, I'm happy to take it on with that challenge in front of me. Well, with, what, uh, with a follow-up to that, with what outcome, though? You, you talk about optimization and you started the conversation, but what's your, uh, what outcome are you striving towards? You know, the, uh, it, it is that optimization. We have competitive markets around the world. We have different jurisdictions with different situations. We have different prices of oil. We have the price of uh, carbon. We have the environment. We have royalties. And so the, the goal would be to try and find an environment that uh, the province is successful, the companies are successful, and ultimately the communities of Alberta are successful. Well, we see the report when it's done. You know, my work is going to be... Uh, going to be public and uh, we're going to be engaging uh, Albertans and so w the because of the minister. Yeah, but uh, the product that we end up with is absolutely going to be public. We've said along with industry and to Albertans that we're going to be clear in this process and transparent. So absolutely what it looks like, is it a report, is it findings, whatever, but it, you'll be an advised along the way, all Albertans will be. In. Is this a full-time job for you right now or is this a part-time job for you? I think it's going to go in fits and starts, but the the uh, ATB is going to lend my uh, time, and I will. Uh, I'm going to give this as much uh, effort as it needs to do a great job. Last well, question: Is the province paying you for this, or is this something you're doing? No, uh, ATB is continuing. They're lending him to us, and well, ATB is paying a salary to be on this panel. Yeah, they're lending him. We'll pay his expenses, of course, uh, in traveling around and that. But uh, his time is being lent to us from ATB. It's being seconded. One last question from Matt, please. Um, Mr. The Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall has kind of used this uh, Alberta's royalty review to try to draw um, uh, investment from oil and gas to his province. Mm -hmm. um, are you concerned that during this review process, oil and gas companies um, may, may just choose to invest elsewhere until uh, decisions have been made? Yeah, you know, uh, in talking to industry, I don't get that sense. They're, they're excited about knowing the outcomes from this, and, and I think they're uh, willing to wait. Um, I was talking to um, the president of Imperial Oil yesterday, and that was the sense I got from him that, um, you know, they want to know the answer, but they're, they're willing to let the process unfold. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you everyone.